ಪಾರ್ಥಾ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣೀ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವತ್ ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣೀ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರಮರು ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈಸ್ಸಾಂಗಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಸ್ಥಿತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿಯಂ ಯೋಗಿ ಯಾಂತನ್ನ ವಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅನ್ಫೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ in the uh, in we are looking at verse number 8 we have seen how bhagavan declares himself herself neither himself nor herself actually to be the taste in the waters and the uh, sound in space and humanity in the human being that which is distinctive to each thing meaning if you take away the sound there is no space that is the idea we must not look for bhagavan is sound then what is silent no not bhagavan if brahman is a sound then abram uh, no sound silence is what abram not brahman and so uh, all that doesn't uh, work it looks funny so we have to take all this metaphorically in the coming verses when bhagavan says i am the sound in space i am the taste in the water that means what we call bhagavan is the content of that very thing rasa it starts with rasa because the word rasa doesn't just mean taste it means the essence of everything the truth of everything the content of everything that because of which a thing is worth being called a thing that is what is the uh, you know that is what uh, is bhagava like supposing if there is to, uh, you know there is an expression what is that an item called tomato uh, soup soup made of tomatoes so then when you say tomato soup what must be the ingredient <laughs> well they can be you can put a uh, cream in it you can put onions in it <laughs> some people do you can put bread crumbs in it you can put um, what is that you know garam masala in it you can put some pepper in it but all that doesn't make tomato soup tomato soup what makes tomato soup tomatoes <laughs> without tomato you just like you cannot have tomato soup just like that without bhagavan you cannot have jagat so when we say waters it is bhagavat ap so it is bhagavan plus water <laughs> it is bhagavan plus in the form of water it is bhagavan in the form of space 
through the sound and why is it called through the sound because in the, the tattva bodha we have studied that sound is in space and sound and space have a distinct connection and so just like that uh, uh, we also say that uh, this uh, this bhagavan uh, the, that which we call bhagavan is what is the truth of space truth of the waters truth of the earth that is also going to be told and so the truth of the is the tomato in the tomato soup so similarly if you say potato soup and don't put potato that means what that means that <laughs> that means one is not uh, 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 you know that that means one is not being true to oneself so if you say potato it should have potato potato soup it should have potato that's why it's called potato soup tomato soup it should have tomatoes and so like this uh, uh, you know bhagavan says i am the truth of everything i am the truth of everything i am the that which makes a thing a thing without me there is no such thing called water there is no such thing called earth there is no such thing called space there is no such thing called human being <laughs> i am that which makes the human being a human being what makes a human being a human being <laughs> complaints <laughs> so uh, 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 yeah. what makes a human being a human being is not complaints compassion compassion is what makes a human being a human being that is what it is that is the highest uh, end of a human being is compassion absolute highest end of a human being is to be a compassionate person and that we have to choose to be and when you choose to be a compassionate person that means you have made it and what is moksha nothing but growing into a loving and compassionate person that is what moksha is nothing else moksha is growing in from a complaining person to a compassionate person <laughs> that is what it is and bhagavan is that which is the highest expression of a human being you, you can't even say highest the only possible expression of a human being which is humanity humanity is compassion and unbridled unconditioned love a love that is not wanting something in return a love that is not waiting to be uh, waiting to be requited this is what it is so this is exactly the uh, the teaching here is that a thing becomes a thing because of my presence without me uh, there is a thing is what nothing a thing is no thing because of me without me a thing is no thing because of me a particular thing gets the status of the word thing in sanskritam the word vastu means thing and the word vastu is reserved for bhagavan brahman without the presence of brahman everything is avastu brahman is what confers upon the, the uh, everything the title of being worthy of being called a thing you if it was possible to remove brahman from everything everything would be what no thing nothing so that is the way in which to uh, understand this uh, uh, these verses so we saw that rasaha aham apsu and then what else prabha asmi so prabha asmi shashi surya yoho can you say that uh, uh, if there is no shine it can be called the sun no <laughs> that which is uh, shining alone is the sun nothing else is the sun how can you say that is uh, that which doesn't shine is the sun no the shine is is specific to sun and uh, the similarly that is what is uh, you know that is what is the uh, idea here similarly that which is i is specific uh, to each and everything i inhabit each and everything as the apara prak prakriti and as para prakriti i do not become any one thing 
just because I'm the taste in the water doesn't mean that I can at the same time uh, I don't become the uh, sun uh, uh, the shine in the sun simultaneously I am the shine in the sun simultaneously I am the taste in the water simultaneously I am the omkara in all the Vedas simultaneously I am the sound uh, in space and uh, I am the, uh, the 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 scent the aroma in the earth it's not that if I become the taste in the water I cannot become uh, the uh, shine in the sun at the same time uh, that, is, that is because my para prakriti, because of my para prakriti, which is what? Which is unbridled, limitless consciousness. I can abide in all things at the same time because time itself is a product of consciousness, so to speak. Time itself has uh, uh, come out of consciousness as though and then so therefore I don't need any particular space. I can occupy all spaces at once without undergoing any change that is para prakriti. But then there is such a thing called water and that does have taste. There is such a, there are such things called sun and moon and they have a shine. There is such a thing called Vedas and they have the Omkara and there is such a thing as space in which sound abides and I am all those things. And what is that? When I am say, saying I am the taste in the water, apara prakriti. The water can change, the taste can change, the water can become water vapor. And the sun itself, after a few billion years, can become red dwarf, blue dwarf, yellow dwarf. And, and then mm, the, the, the space and sound, that also can change. But this is all apara prakriti. But as para prakriti, I do not undergo any change because para prakriti is consciousness. And apara prakriti is the matter. I can I uh, I can abide as matter in matter. I abide as matter as uh, how do I abide? I uh, I abide first as matter. I am non-separate from the name and form. Name and form is me. I am not any name and form. I abide as the truth of all name and forms without undergoing any change. So the para and the apara prakriti are very clear. Going further, Punyo Gandhav Prithivyamcha Punyo Gandhav Prithivyamcha Tejas Chasmi Vibhava Sau Tejas Chasmi Vibhava Sau Jeevanam Sarva Bhuteshu Jeevanam Sarva Bhuteshu Tapaschasmita Pasvishu Tapaschasmita Pasvishu I am the sacred fragrance of the earth. Cha further, I am the sacred fragrance of the earth. I am the fragrance in the earth. We already saw this also in the Tattva Bodha. What is the distinctive feature of earth? Fragrance. Tejascha Asmi Vibhavasau. Vibhavasu means fire. It can also mean sun, but since we have already finished sun earlier, Shashi Surya Yoho, Surya has come here. Uh, so therefore, this Vibhavasu means fire. I am the heat in the fire. I am the, uh, I am the uh, fragrance of the earth. In fact, I am the life in all beings. I am the humanity. I am the compassion in human beings. I am the unconditional love which people can grow to embrace. Then if you ask the question, uh, you know, in, from the earlier verse, how come some people are more compassionate than others? And how come some people are uh, not compassionate at all? They are, they commit homicide, they are repeat offenders, they do all kinds of things. How come they are not uh, compassionate? Compassion is latent, but it has been inhibited by all other uh, uh, effects of Raga, Dvesha, Papa, Punya, Kama, Krodha, all that which we have studied. And even that person 
who is in jail for a murder charge can grow into a compassionate person a loving person a, a mukta purusha this is what we have seen in the uh, in the uh, uh, story of valmiki uh, in the ramayana and then uh, not only i am i am humanity in the human beings i am the very life force in all beings if i withdraw myself then there will not be any sentiency on earth i am the sentiency in all beings i am i am that which makes everything shine and be sentient and then i am the tapas in all the meditating beings i am the tapas so here one kind of heat i am the heat of the fire i am the heat of the tapas heat means everything i am the penance because what is the an ascetic an ascetic is the one what is a tapas we ascetic mendicant the one who does tapas so if there is no tapas the person cannot be called ascetic and so therefore i am the tapas in all the tapas uh, tapas winds in all the tapas winds i am the tapas next one bijam maam sarva bhutanam bijam maam sarva bhutanam विधि पार्थ सनातना विधि पार्थ सनातना बुद्धिर्बुद्धिमता बुद्धिर्बुद्धिमता तेजस तेजस्वी नाम हम तेजस तेजस्वी नाम हम सर्वूता Okay, and here it was something similar. What was that? Jivanam sarva bhuteshu, the sentiency in all beings. This referred to animate beings here. And then what is that? Here, bijam sarva bhutanam. Here, bhutas mean also includes insentient and sentient. there it was jeevanam sarva bhuteshu here uh, it is it is uh, it is sentient and sentient or uh, insentient all the beings and what am i i am the bija in all beings bija means what bija means seed what do you mean i am the seed of all beings i am the origin of all beings seed means origin and the origin of all beings without me there is no beings i am the cradle in which i am the nursery of the jagat you know this new uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, telescope james webb telescope suddenly came upon a wonderful discovery and that uh, what was that it was it caught Uh, in its uh, uh, it caught in its sights uh, a um, a place where all the stars are born and you know what they are calling it the nursery of all the stars the star nursery meaning this is where all the baby stars go to get uh, born and this is the a uh, place where all the nursery uh, stars you can think of each star in its little cradle being rocked <laughs> by ishwara so this is uh, um, uh, this is the uh, nursery of all stars and then the um, and then the uh, uh, so the nursery of all stars and then the nursery of all stars means what the place where all the stars are born and so so similarly we uh, similarly what happens uh, here also i am the i am the nursery in which all beings are born all beings are born so uh, so i am the uh, I, i i am the uh, so here it's not all inanimate uh, you know uh, here it's not just inanimate animate and in inanimate objects all of them all of them are included here bijam maam sarva bhuta uh, and what kind of bija sanatanam bijam sanatanam bijam means 
I am the uh, I am the I am the uh, eternal sea, meaning everything that comes comes from me only. Yeah, I am nothing other than the eternal seed. Eternal means I am there all the time. Whenever anything is born, know me to be the source. Know me to be the source. Uh, nothing else is, uh, uh, you know, nothing else is there other than me. And then nothing else is there uh, outside of me. Nothing else is there, uh, you know, uh, uh, anything, you know, anything that we say is just me alone. Any source you are looking at is what? Myself alone, there is nothing other than myself, there is nothing outside of myself, there is nothing else. I am the Vija. Vija means the, uh, the um, what is that? The source. Source means what here? That the origin of the Jagat. I am the seed. For the Jagat to grow, I am the seed. And who is watering you? I am the water. Where are you? Since the earth is yet to come, where are you? Where are you putting yourself to, to grow into the Jagat? Uh, everything is myself alone. Material is me. Vija is me. The material is me. I am the one who is the cause of the earth. And later he is going to say, I am the Mata and the Pita of the Jagat. I am the mother and the father of the universe. Here, Vijammam Sarva Bhutanam Vidhi. O Partha. O, o, o Partha. Um, o Arjuna. Sanatanam. This word Sanatanam goes with Vijam. A, a seed that never exhausts itself. A seed that is it are always ready to reproduce. And then, what am I? Among the buddhimatam, among the people who are uh, discriminatory, I am the discrimination in the discriminatory people. I am the tejas, the radiance in the radiant ones, in the bold ones, in the people who have a certain charisma. I am that charisma in the charismatic ones. And this is a very humbling experience to go through these verses because what do we think? I did this. I invented. And Bhagavan says, no, you didn't. I, I am declaring my nature and I am telling you, I am the one who has invented this, discovered this. I am this. And I am the one that is the cause of the universe. Oh, but I am so intelligent to figure you out. Well, I am the, the, the intelligence in you is also me, given by me first. And then I am non-separate from the intelligence. And somebody else says, so I am so bold, I am so dashing, I can do anything. I am the Tejas in everybody that has Tejas. Then next one, this is a very important verse. 711 is a very important verse. Okay. Balam Balamatam Balam Balavatam Chaham Balam Balavatam Chaham Kamaraga Vibarjitam Kamaraga Vibarjitam Dharma Viruddho Bhuteshu Dharma Viruddho Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatar Shabha Kamosmi Bharatar Shabha So, uh, next one Balam Balavatam Cha Aham Aham Balam I am the strength in the strong What am I? I am the strength in the strong In people who say I am the strongest East or West I am the best uh, No, that's not you that happens to be what? Me. And what am I doing? I am telling the, I am telling the truth of my own nature. But telling the truth of my own nature. And then, uh, uh, so why are you the strength in the strong? Because uh, when you say such and such a person is a strong person, what stands out? The strength. So anything that stands out, and whatever makes that thing that thing, I am that. And all these examples are given 
And here there is a small difference. In the 10th chapter also we will see a list of all the wonderful things that Bhagavan has taken and says, I am this Veda Nam Sama Vedos me. Like this, I am the Sama Veda. In the Vedas he takes the best things for himself and he says, I am this. Same thing here also. But there is a slight difference. There Bhagavan is recalling the, you know, the reclaiming the intellectual copyright. The intellectual copyright uh, of everything, meaning you are, uh, you are not the author of it. I am the author of it. And here the authorship itself, how I am the author is, is being, is being uh, unfolded. The same uh, spirit in both, but the purpose of unfoldment is different. In the 10th chapter, we, when we come to that, we will see that the purpose of unfolding is to show that, uh, that I am the, um, I am everything in the universe. Everything that is wonderful is myself alone. Everything that is wonderful is myself alone. Here, the purpose is slightly different. Here the purpose is to show that the entire Jagat is non-separate from me. I am the Karana. I am everything. I am the uh, Nimitta Karana. I am the Upadana Karana. I am everything that you can possibly think of. That is what I am. So I am the intelligence behind the, behind the people who are intelligent. And sometimes what? People belong to this Mensa club as young children. They are taken to this, uh, they have high IQ. And if you put them in a regular school, they'll get bored. So they are taken into some kind of a club where they are taught because at, at their level. And then, uh, so when the people are enjoying the intelligence, it is because of my Anugraha, my grace alone. It is, it is, my, it is because of me. It's because I am there in the, uh, in, in the form of grace. And so tejas means the ability to, to, to shine, the ability to, to be valorous, to be, to be a little bit out of the ordinary, to be radiant. All that is mine. I have the, I am the parakrama in, in everyone. And then that is what it is. And I, I can, oh, I am that which gives the people the capacity to overcome difficulty. That is, the, that is the nature. That is my nature. What kind of a nature it is? It is the, the that is my apara prakriti. And what is para prakriti? That I abide is the para prakriti. That I abide as consciousness in every human being. That is para prakriti. That I abide in the form of intelligence. Apara prakriti. See, the two things are very beautiful. So the credit goes to the Lord alone. And this the, the, these are very, very Humbling uh, verses, humbling verses, and then what? I am uh, earlier. It was told. Um, yeah, this one I forgot. I was going to share this earlier. It was told that uh, I am. Uh, let us go to that place. Yeah, I am the. I am the heat and the light in the fire. I am the heat and the light in the fire. I was. I forgot one thing here. In the Kena Upanishad, there is a story. The Devatas were rejoicing their latest, uh, their latest victory over the Asuras. Then they had a party. The glasses were clinking. Soma juice was flowing in abundance. And everybody was having a very good time. And then Indra, Lord Indra, the, uh, the uh, what is that, the king of uh, Swargaloka, and then Vayu and Agni, all of them, they were talking about how nicely they uh, vanished all the Asuras. Vayu said, I just went foo. And when I went foo, all of them ran away. All the Asuras ran away just by me saying foo. Simple, Vayu said. And then Agni said, I didn't even have to bring out seven tongues, Kali, Karali, Manojava, etc. I just said, I just sent out a little piece of, you know, little spark and all of them ran away. And Indra said, oh, you lowly ones, you know what? 
I didn't have to do anything. You all had to use some of your uh, forces. What did I do? I just looked at the, the Asura and twirled my moustache and off he went. Like this they were saying and rejoicing happily. They forgot that Bhagavan was there. <laughs> Bhagavan was there. They just totally forgot. And they were saying, uh, what were they saying in Sanskritam? Asma Kameva Vijaya, a lot of chest, uh, chest beating, ra, 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 uh, and then victory calls were going on. Asma Kameva Vijaya, chest tapping, me, 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 our victory this is. Asma Kameva Mahima means our glory it is. If it is our victory, the glory belongs to who? Ourselves, we are the ones, we are the best, east or west. These are all celestials. They are all functionaries of Bhagavan. They are all exalted jivas who are doing Bhagavan's bidding. This happily they forgot. And then what were they doing? They were just uh, proclaiming that this victory belonged to themselves alone, nobody else. And then suddenly there was a gate crasher who went through security somehow. Even the security was not able to stop this person, this fellow. Who was that? Yaksha, another celestial being. But so charismatic, so lustrous, so luminous. Everybody is getting attracted to this, to, to this Yaksha. Who is he? How did he come to this party? Do we know him? Have we met him before? And we can't even say we don't know him because then it will be embarrassing. If supposing you meet somebody at a party and then what? You claim to not know them and they will just, uh, they, they will say, come on, you came to my house, uh, you know, last year and then you, you ate all my food. How come you say you don't know me? So you want to avoid an embarrassment like that or somebody can say, I met you at so and so's house. Therefore, everybody was kind of pussyfooting around and not really walking on eggshells, not really approaching this. But Indra was very curious. And Indra being the king of heaven has ahankara, doesn't want to go, sends Agni. You go, find out who this Yaksha is. Agni trots off, Shimmi is over there. And before Agni can find out who the Yaksha is, the Yaksha says... <laughs> Kosa, who are you? It's a slap on the face for Agni. <laughs> Imagine, you know, somebody very famous, Narendra Modi is going to some city and then goes to, let's say he, uh, he is not along with his entourage. He goes and wants to go and buy something from a small shop. He says, okay, ek chai ho jai, give me a tea, bro, give me a tea, <laughs> something like that. He's going to order his tea and then suddenly the man behind the uh, tea stall says, who are you? <laughs> the person whose photo is there in every paper, when? Every day, all the time. Not a single day, the, the prime minister is not in the news. Similarly, some big celebrity whose, whose uh, uh, films are all over the place. You see the person in, in, uh, in, in big, big holdings. You see them everywhere. And that's why they have contests. You know, they will publish one eye <laughs> belonging to Amitabh Bachchan. And just one eye and the fans are so, you know, the fans are so uh, knowledgeable that out of this one eye, they will say, oh, this must be Amitabh Bachchan. <laughs> That's why they are called fans. You know what fan is short for? Fanatic. Ah, this, is, <laughs> this is what it is. Fan is short for fanatic and so no matter what disguise Amitabh Bachchan might wear or no, no matter what uh, role he may be playing and you just take a little photo of one eye, not even both the eyes, you just take a photo of one eye and put it in the contest and then many people will get that right. That is the power of the celebrity and Agni is one such celebrity. The day starts with Surya Namaskara, Argya in the Hindu tradition giving water, uh, three times giving water to the sun. 
giving argya to the sun surya namaskara om mitraya namaha this is how the day starts with the worship of the sun we are a sun culture fire culture and so the fire is everywhere fire is in the cooking fire is in the sun and then the fire is in the stomach fire is also there in the form of the temperature of the body 98.6 what is that it is sakshat agni that is the normal temperature that is the that is sakshat agni that is the presence of agni and to savan the to that agni what do you say you say who are you yaksha says agni is just paralyzed he goes into the fright no he goes into the freeze mode remember last uh, few days ago we talked about the four modes of habitual responses fright flight fall and freeze so agni goes into the freeze mode he is kind of shocked because he has never encountered this situation before where somebody tells him who are you <laughs> he is just used to people falling and he is used to say, telling people shu 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 he has hired some security so that they can all say shu 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 so that he can walk on the road he can go there uh, and uh, you know he can uh, he can go somewhere without being disturbed but then here yaksha tells who are you and he says and agni says what what a question i am agni and he gives his another me a name jata vedo veda aham aham jata veda aham jata veda ha jata veda means that which is the jate jate vidyate that whose presence you know just upon birth which you know when the baby is born the, the midwife or the doctor will touch the baby to make sure it's alive that is agni that is agni and and i am that Uh, what do you mean who i am and the yakshas then asked the next question kasmin stvai viryam bho meaning what are you well known for <laughs> what do you do sir what are you well known for that is the second slap on this side first agni got a slap on this side now agni gets a slap on this other side what do you mean what i do come on and then he says yat kinchit asti whatever is there in this whole jagat dahayam i have the capacity to burn i have the capacity to burn everything that is there in this universe what do you mean what do i do google me and find out stupid yaksha i don't know where you came from did you come from uh, some other uh, loka looks like you don't know me at all you must have come from a loka where there is no fire and that's that's the only explanation i can think why why you are behaving so um, uh, uh, you know so silly in such a silly way in such an ignorant way and then yaksha is not done with agni he brings a small miserable dry blade of grass and puts it in between them and he says oh so your fame is in burning things can you burn this for me and agni rolls his eyes <laughs> like that he goes what do you mean it's like telling einstein or somebody it's like telling einstein you know can you just say say what is <laughs> what is 2 plus 2 <laughs> this is not even worth engaging in if you had asked albert einstein what is 2 plus 2 he would have just simply perhaps walked away because it's not worth engaging and what does agni do agni is in the freeze mode he cannot walk away he has become a zombie <laughs> and he keeps doing unbeknownst to him and uh, uh, not wanting to do this he keeps doing the yaksha's bidding because the yaksha has has him in a charismatic hold the yaksha has as though does done some mantra and possessed him he can't but listen to yaksha and then he says oh this is no problem and the ego also comes in the way and what does he say this miserable grass you are asking me to burn this is nothing so he just uh, unleashes a small little flame like this the grass doesn't even uh, shake or move then he said oh maybe some you know maybe it is wet so maybe a little more little more 
falls. The fire blows, nothing happens. Then he commands all the tongues of fire, Kali, where are you? Karali, I need you. Manojava, come on, you used to be so quick. What happened? Sulohita, come. Sudhubra Varuna, come. Uh, Spulingini, Vishwaruchi, Devi, are you all dead? Where did you all go? Come on, this is not the time to take a coffee break. Come on. They all rush to his aid and then along with his seven consorts, a blazing fire, he creates a conflagration, all what? To save his ego by burning this miserable blade of grass. The grass doesn't even change color. And at the last, as a last ditch effort, you know what he does? He says, I'm going to sit on it, I'm going to microwave it. That is how, my dear friends, the microwave was discovered. So, so then he sits on it and then cooks it. Nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens to the blade of grass. And then Agni shimmies away from there and comes back. He doesn't want to tell the whole story. He is still licking his wounds. He has had such a put down. For a celebrity, this kind of a put down is just so shameful. So he doesn't want to be embarrassed again in front of his friends, Indra and uh, Vayu. So he just says, I could not find who the Yaksha was. Indra goes, same exact thing. Who are you? What's your claim to fame? Can you, oh, you blow everything. Oh, can you blow away this piece of grass? Cannot blow. Even tornadoes he unleashes cannot blow. And finally, Indra goes to find out who it is and the Yaksha disappears. And Indra has a little more Sattvika Guna, fewer Raga Dveshas than Agni and Vayu. And then what? <laughs> and then as a result, Indra is sitting there, um, you know, in meditation. Who were you? What did I miss? In that same spot, where the yaksha disappeared, a, a golden woman comes. She is resplendent, bright, a goddess comes. She is the teacher of Brahma Vidya. She teaches Brahma Vidya to, to uh, Indra. And then Indra teaches Agni, Vayu, etc. And then what does she teach? Uh, Sa Brahma iti hovachadi. What did you miss? You missed Ishvara. You missed Yaksha was really Brahman, Ishvara. And then she teaches about Ishvara, how it's not an object and how it is that very thing because of which it uh, that thing is worth being called a thing. The presence of Ishvara is what makes fire, fire, is what makes water, water, is what makes wind, wind, is what makes the air, the, the air, the air, the earth, the earth, the space, the space. And so, therefore, this illustrates, this story in the, in the Upanishad illustrates very well what we are talking about here. Uh, next one. So, here, so I am, I, I, I am the strength in the strong. And when we hear the word strength, you know, we get worried. Means there are bullies. <laughs> bullies are there. What kind of bullies? People who use their strength against others. People who use their strength against others are there. Big, big bullies are there. So, I am the strength in the strong means what? That means what? I am the mafia. And then when I come, you, when I just look at you, you have to evacuate your house. You have to vacate your house. Vacate my house? What do you mean? I'm I'm paying my rent. Not anymore. Doesn't matter if you paid even one year advance rent. You have to vacate. You have to leave. Why? Because I want this house. But where will I go? I don't care. I want this house and I have the I have the strength to take it from you. I have all, all these henchmen. Don't you see all these people? This riffraff, all these people belong to me and they will just throw all your things out and evacuate you for no reason at all. And so to, uh, to stop that, to, uh, uh, to, to stop that, the next line is given, what kind of balam? Dharmic bala. Kama raga vivarjitam. Kama here is, is no agenda. Raga here is no specific uh, uh, desire. No desire and no agenda. Vivarjitam. 
devoid of agenda devoid of particular uh, 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 particular raga etc uh, this is the this is the uh, uh, this is the bala what kind of bala a bala that is used for good a bala that is used for the benefit of the people like the bala arjuna is uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, the, the arjuna is the um, is fighting this dharmic war that kind of bala wonderful and then the, since kama and raga are together meaning the same thing adi shankara gives slightly different meaning so he says kamascha ragascha kama ragau and what is kama kama ha trishna asanni krishteshu vishayeshu trishna kama here is the longing for things not yet possessed asanni krishteshu not yet with oneself so the objects far away objects belonging to somebody else when i want that is called kama and here what is raga means ranjana prapteshu vishayeshu uh, this this is what it is ranjana means the fondness the fo- ranjana the fondness for objects that are i already have fondness for o- objects for, for what i already have so then tabhyam uh, vivarjitam devoid of these strong passions dehadi dharana dharana matrartham balam so this is the uh, this is the thing so the uh, the i am the vitality the bala that is devoid of any kind of kama just to sustain the life whatever i need just to sustain the life whatever i need that is balam and then same thing uh, the next one dharma aviruddha bhuteshu kama asmi i am the kama first he says i am that which is i am the strength that is devoid of kama and then what what is kama kama is also me provided and here we have to read the fine print it is not against dharma uh, in all beings i am the desire kama asmi sarva bhuteshu he bharatarshabha oh the bold the courageous one in the line of bharata akamosmi sarva bhuteshu i am the i am the desire in all beings provided the desire does not violate dharma dharmic desire i am is bhagavan adharmic desire what it is you it's the abuse of your free will as a jiva that is what is the difference because of course i gave you free will so everything is me uh, uh, me alone but you have abused the free will this is what it is you have the abuse the the, the free will and so therefore what um, so the, therefore this is the uh, uh, this is the this is the idea you have abused the free will and i cannot be part, part of it why not because you had a choice you had a choice to be dharmic and you had a choice to be free you had a choice to go along with the 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 uh, shasana the laws that are in existence you had a chance to go you had a ch- chance to go you had a chance to go there and you had a chance to be with me you had a chance to be one with me and what did you choose to go away from me and whenever because what what am i i am dharma i am dharma i i am nothing but dharma and if i am nothing but dharma and you are violating me then what are you doing you are going against dharma you are going against dharma you are violating my rule that is one small way to look at it but then if uh, you know uh, a, a kind of a surface level and shallow understanding you are violating my rule and then Uh, a, a deeper understanding is that i am uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you are not just violating my rule you are violating my very presence you are going against my very presence that is the idea so then uh, so i am not brute force because that is what you desire to use if you are deploying brute force i cannot be part of that i don't condone himsa i don't condone brute force 
I am not this thing. And similarly, the karma is also of two types. The desire is in the second line. The desire is also two types. Dharmic and then uh, the uh, dharmic and then uh, uh, what else? The adharmic. Adharmic karma, I am not. Something already belongs to somebody else. But what, what do you do? You say, I want it. And you go use brute force in order to get what you want. And that is not me. That means you are going away from me. How? Because of the deployment, the wrong deployment of the free will. The free will is actually a slave to karma, so you can't even call it a free will. So that you have become a slave to karma, that is on you, that is not on me. You cannot blame Bhagavan. Oh, I desire this. You have made me desire this. No. <laughs> there you have to take responsibility because you have free will. And, and so this is the, uh, this is exactly what the, the, um, the idea is. And so everything that you see in the universe is not outside of me. All that which is, uh, which is there, whatever is needed to be called that particular thing, know that to be me alone. So this kind of up till verse 11 uh, or maybe even till 12, let me just see, I forgot what I said. Uh, yeah, till 12, so, you know, it is all the presence of Bhagavan and the unfoldment of Bhagavan in the universe. So one more verse is there. Let us complete that. Ye chai vasatvika bhavaha Ye chai vasatvika bhavaha Rajasastama sashchaye Rajasastama sashchaye Matta eveti tan vidhi Matta eveti tan vidhi Natvaham te shute mayi Natvaham te shute mayi So this is again very much uh, uh, you know up till now Bhagavan has been looking at the external world which is non-separate from the Lord in the form of the cause, the intelligent cause and the material cause, uh, para prakriti, apara prakriti. And then now Bhagavan says, I am not just the external world, I am not just manifest as the external world, I am manifest as your antakkarana, as your inner world. And what is your inner world? Your inner world of thoughts, vrittis. Vrittis here are called bhavaha, vrittis. So, all the states of mind are called bhavaha, angry bhava, angry state of mind, rajasika, rajasik, rajasik bhava, and a very compassionate state of mind, sattvika bhava. And then lazy, indolent, resentful, grieving state of mind. Uh, the tamasa, ta, ta, tamasik bhava. Restless state of mind, rajasik. So like this, all this restless and then inert, inertia, all this. All this are what? <laughs> you know, they are, they are again born of me. They are not, they are born of me. What is this? Apara prakriti. The material of with which Maya has painted the whole world, Rajas, Tamas, Sattva, know them to all have ensued from me. I am the paint called Rajas. I am the paint called Sattva. I am the paint called Tamas. And I have painted the entire cre creation with the flare of my brush. So that everyone is, like I said the other day, everyone is trapped in this painting, so to speak, until they understand this verse. Until they come to the 12th verse of the Bhagavad Gita in the 7th chapter, people feel trapped in some kind of a bizarre, nightmarish, uh, you know, painting. And, you know, they are just looking behind the painting. And all that needs to do is for the Ajnanam to unravel. When the tapestry unravels, all you see is the string. What is the string? The string is the 
the, that upon which the necklace in the form of the whole jagat is strung. So much fun this chapter is. So beautiful this chapter is. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah. So your inner thoughts are also me. Your inner world is me. Your outer world is non-separate from me. I abide in you as consciousness. That is my para prakriti. I abide in you as that unchanging Chaitanya Swarupa, the unchanging consciousness, the consciousness that undergoes uh, no rise and fall and no change at all. That which is Trikale Pitishthati, that which is there in all periods of time, know that to be me. That is what is me. But I am also in you. Yeah, I can. You are. You. I. You can recognize my presence also in the changing things inside yourself. Your inner world is 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 full of rich thoughts, all kinds of thoughts. Sometimes the thoughts are this person deserves a beating, <laughs> rajasic thought. Sometimes the thought is. Oh, I want to be nicer. I want to grow into a more compassionate person. Sattvic thought. Sometimes, ah, why bother? Why should I come to class? Why should I listen? What's going to happen? Tamasic thoughts. All of them, matta eva, mattaha eva. Mattaha means they are born of me alone. Mattaha eva. Tan vidhi vaktaha eva. Know them to have come from me alone. They are all me alone. And so the, 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 what is the inner world of the human being? There are uh, two components to the mind. One is the changeless I, Sakshi, the one that is always there, always there observing everything. And the other one is that which is the changing thoughts. The objects of thoughts are changing. Apara prakriti. Object of thought, apara prakriti. Then the truth, the content of the thinker, para prakriti. And then that is the, uh, uh, the that is exactly, uh, you know, that, that, that changing part of the mind is apara prakriti of Bhagavad. So really, you know, even when there is a difficult thought, what, what you say, this is, this is apara prakriti of Bhagavan. This is uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, what is that? Uh, this is uh, Bhagavan alone. This has come from Bhagavan alone. What? Not the thought, but the the bija, the momentum for the thought. The rajas, tamas, sattva is goddess. Is the form of the goddess. And then you can say, I want to be free of this. The, the, the painting, the free of the colors of the painting. I don't want to feel trapped. I want to be one with what? Ra Prakriti. So that oneness is not on the level of Apara Prakriti. That oneness uh, that is uh, established between Jiva and Ishvara is on the level of Para Prakriti alone. Apara Prakriti is the manifest universe and Sattvika Bhava, Rajasa Bhava, Tamasa Bhava are all manifest as the mind. This is, you know, when you look at the fifth, uh, uh, no, tenth chapter of uh, uh, the Panchadashi, tenth chapter of the Panchadashi uh, is, is called Nataka Deepa. Beautiful metaphor is there. Very beautiful metaphor. There is a, there is a auditorium, an open air audit, auditorium. There is a dancer who comes and there is an audience. People have come to Watch the dance, evening program. And then there are live musicians with this and with the tanpura and with the vocalist and there's a live musical orchestra. Musicians are there performing on the veena, on the tabla, on the tanpura, all these various musical instruments. And the singer is singing and there is one person to just clap and uh, keep the beat. That person is clapping. Stage is ready, audience is going wild because she is a very famous dancer. In the hall she comes and she just gives a brilliant performance. <laughs> and then what? And then the dance performance is over, she goes away. And the audience also go away. What is there in the hall? Vidyaranya Swami says, Swamiji says, 
Don't say there is nothing in the hall. <laughs> what is there in the hall? A big light like a firebrand that is there in the middle of the auditorium. It's like a round semicircular auditorium like a, what is that called? Amphitheater. That is the thing. So this is called the Nataka Deepa, the, the magic of the theater lamp. So the lamp lights up the theater, the lamp lights up the musicians, <laughs> and the, la the lamp lights up the tabla person, the lamp lights up the audience. That's how they, so they do, they make a count and say, oh, tonight's show was very successful, so many people came. The lamp lights up the dancer. And when every go, everybody goes away, the lamp lights up the emptiness. So that part of the mind which lights up everything, that component of the mind, know this to be para prakriti, it lights up the presence of the difficult thoughts. That is para prakriti and the difficult thoughts themselves are what? Apara prakriti. Know me to be the uh, know me to be this and uh, and then what mat no know, know these thoughts uh, uh, have originated in me but what i uh, i have nothing to do with any of them i have nothing to do with any of them know them to be born of me but i am not dependent on them i don't have sattva rajas tamas i am free of sattva rajas tamas but what about sattva rajas tamas they are not free of me. <laughs> what a lovely place to end. Fantastic. Lots of possibilities for Nitidhyasana. I hope you will contemplate on this uh, very rich set of verses. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaga Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hi Om Thank you.